Hello and welcome to me responding to public demand for more ranking videos. However, in this I'm going to be ranking Instagram poems that I've pulled out of a variety of, of um, articles saying how Instagram poetry is revolutionizing the art form and bringing it to a much wider audience than ever before. From my limited experience of reading poems on Instagram, that hasn't been how I felt. However, because these are in that sort of articles, then we can expect them to be of the standard that they're either really popular or they're really good. They're open to criticism. However, I have taken the names off so that there's nothing personal involved in this. I don't know any of these people. Like I said, they're just poems picked at random. And the first one is called Aftermath, which I'm really, really hoping isn't written by Chuck Wendy. I want to talk about the aftermath of love. Not the honeymoon or the hitherto, but the upshot and the convalescence, the slow hard hauling, the heavy toe. I want to tell you about those evenings that crept inside like a vagrant cat and cast round its drawn out shadow, untoward, insufferably black. I want to write about the mornings, the sterility of the stark cold light, struck against a pair of bare shoulders, lurid whisper of a misspent night. I want to convey the afternoon setting, the water torture of the sink, drip by drip the clock and it's ticking and too much time left now to think. So the first thing that you'll notice of course is that this definite structure to this with four stanzas that the first three have the same rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B whereas the last one is A, B, A, B. So there's a slight change in the last one um, that it seems to be like it says in the first line it's, it's not about love but it's kind of it kind of is it's not so much about being in love, but love itself. And in that regard, you might expect something of a, with a rigid structure, perhaps a sonnet or something like that, even if you were playing with the conventions of the sonnet or the themes. Um, if this is a sonnet, then off the top of my head, I don't know what type it is. 14 lines would be typical. An English sonnet would be three stanzas and then a couplet, whereas this is 16 lines. It's, it's four, four quatrains, four stanzas of four lines. I'm not sure that, that, that personally I like this very much. I think that when you read it, it reads easily, like there's a structure, that, like there's a meter. Um, and in that regard, I, I don't think that this is a bad poem. I just don't think that I really like it. Is a slow, hard hauling, the heavy toe, is that they even mean like the recovery from an ended love or the fact that love deteriorates from being like the passionate relationship into more of a grind but then you've got this degree of the vagrant cat the drawn out shadow the insufferably black starts to become almost sinister it becomes unpleasant and it's really negative and i think that if if those words imply what I think they imply, and that is describing a relationship, then it's one you want out of. However, I'm not completely sure that it is because it could be describing the negativity of a love relationship having ended the, the convalescence, the recovery from love. But then you've got this the sterility of the cold, stark mornings struck against a pair of bare shoulders, the lewd whisper of a misspent night. So like I say, if, if this is we've moved on from love, this is an, uh, um, what we do after love, how we recover from love, then that's suggestive of a uh, one night stand or something like that. Or even if you're in a relationship, it's suggestive of um, infidelity. You wouldn't say a lurid whisper of a misspent night about spending a loveless night with your partner. If this is a relationship you're in, get out of it. And if it's not, then the second stanza is you moping around get over yourself and the third stanza is you making bad life choices so get over yourself the water torture drip by drip too much time left it's like there's so much negative if this is a relationship you're in just end it and leave it seems to be the message but i would much prefer a poem that came at it from a different angle it's like if you're in a relationship that's going wrong then the time to try to arrest that is before the complete collapse of it so look at what made it work try to get that back and admittedly you might find looking back on the, the start of the relationship what did make it work you might actually find um that there was nothing beyond um lust and therefore you're just better off ending it but i'm in danger of turning this into an agony aunt column and it's supposed to be about the poem so i'm gonna say that 
in terms of the structure, the style, the format, everything about this is really well put together. I just don't really like it. So that's a personal thing. So in this regard, in, if this is bringing poetry to the masses, then there's nothing wrong with that at all. That's a decent effort, it's a decent poem. If I'm uh, ranking these on my ranking scale, then so a solid GCSE poem, decent. Right, so this is really short. So it's, our backs tell stories, no books have the spine to carry. Okay, so my, my initial reaction to that um, is I quite like it, like the play on, on the words of books and the spine and, and perhaps like the books don't have the backbone, if you like, as much as the spine to, to convey the, the true message. Um, I dislike the attribution to a woman of colour. I think that one person claiming to speak to for not just one race, but a variety of races, to sort of a collectivism that I'm kind of against. Um, but in terms of where it is on Instagram, I think that it's, it's perfect for Instagram and in that it's like, you look at it, you scroll on to the next one, you know, you, you, the, the message passes br very briefly through the brain and, you know, you might click like, but you're straight off it, which, kind of undersells the importance of the message I think but then at the same time if you start to linger on it you go well attributing it in that way I don't really like that and then um, our backs tell stories no books have the spine to carry it's like well actually there are countless books on the subject of mistreatment like the history of the slave trade is not just written by white people there were countless people who were slaves who wrote their um, extracts we look at them in GCSEs and things like that so those books do exist so I kind of like the, the more you think about this the more I kind of like I think it's simplistic and and that's a, like a negative thing f for it which I think uh, collectivism is, is a very simplistic way of looking at things anyway so in that regard I'm kind of like the, the message is trying to convey the 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 thoughts behind it I think were really positive and um, the right thing to do I'd be concerned about one who wrote it like really who who's giving themselves the voice for all those people and I would be concerned about the fact that like I say they're just this this idea that the books don't tell this message is just simply not true either so it's very simplistic it's kind of like consume move on and the, the subject matter really deserves more than that. The sort of more than that that you'll actually find in one of the books is dismissing, really. So I don't really like it. I'm not really in terms of of, of of whether that's even a poem. I guess because the way they've structured it, there's a, a distinct effort in terms of the structure of it to make it look like a poem. But it almost feels more like a proverb. Isn't this... The, the closest you could say to a rhyme would be our, our backs, no books. But you don't have that in terms of the structure. You have have on the end of the book. So if you had have on a separate line, you'd have our backs, no books. So there would be structure there. There would be recognisable poetic convention there. Um, in terms of our backs and books is a power rhyme, I think. But also, you just like the, the, you'd have the meter, the structure would be the same. Then you have, perhaps you could say, alliteration between tell stories, the spine. But again, you've got an extra word on um, spine. So that the structure there of the line, tell stories, the spine. In terms of syllables, I think they do come out the same. But the alliteration is kind of, it's a little bit weak. Especially because you have a line in the middle of those two lines. And you could say, oh, I have... Like book ended, if you like, at almost to cover the the assonance of backs and carry. However, the the word hour is in in the wrong place if you're doing that as well. So I think that you I'm looking for poetry in here, and I think that if there is any as incidental, I think this is more an attempt at an affirmation or a proverb. You know, if your task was write a poem and you put that in a GCSE, you might depends on, on your tutor, I suppose, but you might find that the, the message being of the moment gets you a pass, whereas your actual knowledge and understanding and use of poetic conventions does not. Okay, so this next one is, you took the last bus home. You took the last bus home. Don't know how you got it through the door. You're always doing amazing stuff, 
like the time you caught that train. Okay, yeah, I like this one. This is this is kind of what I like um, with poetry. I don't think it's incredibly deep, but it's a nice play on words. And if you look at the structure of it, you know, the first stanza and the second, are the only two lines, are broadly similar again. So I think, you know, there's a variation of syllables there, so we're not particularly finding a meter or anything. But I like the fact that it plays on words. I like the fact that if you were sending this to a partner or something that they probably would quite enjoy as well it's fun and I kind of lean that way with my poetry I, I'm not you know you can appreciate the, the the deeper and more thoughtful stuff but I just like something that's a little bit fun a little bit of whimsy which I think this is so there's not really a lot to say about it don't think that there's anything that you would consider any sort of structure here beyond first seconds first and last stanzas being broadly similar I don't know how not picking up any rhymes or anything so it's just the fact that it's a play on words the way it's laid out makes it look like verse so again decent yeah decent i i i, I pass it i i would like to see more of that style and see whether this person was like really really good at poetry or whether this was just one that was a little bit of whimsy and just kind of works this one I, I might have cut the title off. It might have been that the title and the author's name were on the same line or something like that, but I, I can't remember what it was called. All my potential was wrapped up in cling film to keep it safe and intact. Peeling back the layers is hard, but getting to the core is going to be worth it. Uh, so I have to read that again. Uh, all, the, all my potential was wrapped up in cling film to keep it safe and intact. Okay, so that's a typo. They mean intact, as in complete, rather than in diplomacy. Peeling back the layers is hard. The end of the core is going to be worth it. I, I think I'm just going to go out on them and say I don't get it. I, I don't get... I don't get where the poetry is. I don't... There's no structure. There's no... There's no rhyming... It's just all over the place, and all my potential was wrapped up in cling film to keep it safe and intact. But, uh, you know, to be quite literal, which I guess you shouldn't be with poetry, that's not what cling film does. Peeling back the layers is hard. Again, not what cling film does. But getting to the core is going to be worth it. Well, not if your poetry is anything to go by. Because if poetry is a reflection of your artistry, of your soul, then then you're just a confusing human being. To, I don't get that. All my potential was wrapped up in cling film to keep it safe. It seems like this is the most banal and um, barely thought through attempt at poetry. I just don't see the poetry. It's more like an attempt at self-affirmation and just confusing, just bizarre, a fundamental misunderstanding. It's not just of how cling film works, but of how poetry works. Because if you're going to be a poem, a poet rather, you need to understand that there are rules and conventions. You read something like T.S. Eliot and, and you see that he understands the rules and is playing with them is what makes it brilliant. I don't think that this person understands the rules. I'm not even sure that they understand that there are rules. It's almost like I've taken some cliches from somewhere and I've tried to make it into a verse, but I don't understand what verse is, so I haven't done it. Um, to, to be diplomatic, put my teacher hat on, I would be um, offering advice such as... Um, the, the final line is usually a subversion. So if your message is that what's inside is, is worth it, then perhaps something like an oyster rather than potential wrapped in cling film is the way to go because, you know, there's that potential for a pearl. Whereas um, this is just... Because we're not even getting to the core of a human. We're getting to the core of their potential... To, to do to do what I definitely not to write poetry. Um, 
yeah, as, as put, put, trying to be diplomatic, trying to be that, that teacher guy, um, I'd fail this and fail it hard. There's, there's nothing noticeably poetic about this. It's not verse. It's, it's, it's probably feels like somebody's just trying, chopping up pro, uh, prose to try to make it look verse, which means you don't understand what either are. And the typo doesn't help, but you know, I'm trying to look beyond that. Peeling back the layers is hard to get into the cause. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's, it feels like uh, it's definitely a GCSE fail. There's nothing poetic or or even demonstrates an understanding of poetry in here. There's there's nothing that you could pick out and say, that's a really good idea. Even the basic theme of it seems to me to be like a cliche taken from somewhere without any real inspiration behind it. Um, I mean, I've taught... Um, every age between 12 and 16 but I haven't seen a poem like that um, well I suppose I have like some of the 12 year olds could not get to grips with limericks when we were doing a like meter and structure they just could not um, so I have seen poems that are like that demonstrate this failure to understand um, what makes poetry poetry I don't know, I'm, I'm still looking at it because I'm trying to find the poetry so I can go, oh, right, I see what they've done there. And I guess that in itself is a strength because like like the our backs tell stories that the book won't, one was so clearly an attempt at a proverb, not a poem, and specifically designed to be swiped over in, in five seconds, whereas this has actually got my attention but only in a way that's given me a headache. So I'm going to move on and say that this is a failure. So, a two-ton whale washed ashore with 30 plastic bags in its stomach. It couldn't swallow anything. Its organs were obstructed. Its muscles and fat, fat had its muscles and fat had thinned, which led to much discussion. The cause of death? It was put down as there was nothing that could be done. The reverse of health wasn't an option with this one, so the local authorities put a halt to its pain and agony and made sure it was made to rest in its place of happiness. Okay, so in terms of the way it looks on screen, there's been an attempt here again to make this look like verse, but this is not verse, this is prose. And the reason for that is because when you look at where the poetics are, the attempts at artistry, at attempts at using language in a richer, more varied, or more impactful form, then you go, oh, like the, the two-ton whale wash, so there's an attempt at alliteration there, but I just think that that's just, sometimes it happens by just language being language and not through a conscious effort. I mean, you've got assonance, plastic and bags, you go, oh, there's in a, in alliteration in it. No, there's, there's really not. You've got two lines beginning with it, but that could just be because they run out of room and not because they tried deliberately to use like some anaphora or something. His muscles and fat had thin. So you've got assonance and then you've got almost alliteration. But again, by chance, I think, by more than by design. A reverse of health wasn't an option with this one, so the local authorities made a halt to its pain and agony and made sure it was made to rest in its place of happiness. I think that is a typo and should be laid, so you can't even go, um, that laid and made, you go, oh, there's assonance, but again, with that amount of words in that line to have made play, laid place so maybe maybe at a push but i just think it's more likely to be through luck you can't say happiness is because place has a much softer happiness is a heart much harder a sound so that's not assonance and maybe you go sure was rest its place so there's a degree of um it's like sibilance, perhaps, but 
because you're not seeing anything stronger in terms of poetics anywhere else I would question that I would also go that is so awkward that a reverse of health wasn't an option with this one makes you go oh, maybe that's an attempt at poetics but you know, I'm actually thinking that perhaps this is a translation that it isn't or wasn't originally written in English or it's written by somebody who has English as an additional language and it isn't their, their, their first language and therefore it's more work for them and the fact that I've got the authorities put a halt to its pain and its agony and then that last bit I think that's just a typo but it's still awkward and that would explain Though, though it was put down, I think that put down is kind of an English colloquialism. I don't know if it's an American one or if it's gone to any other cultures, but perhaps maybe I'm, I'm second guessing where this is from. But I, th I don't think that this is verse. I think that this is prose that's been structured to try to make it look like it's something other than what it is. I don't think that, you know, the, the environmental message, fine. You know, I don't have an issue with trying to stop whales swallowing plastic bags and dying. I don't know how common that is, but you know, I'm all in favour of the ecological message, the environmental message. But in terms of poetry, I'm really struggling. Like stomach obstructed. If it was stomach and obstruct, you go that. That's okay. That's a rhyme. But it, the stomach doesn't rhyme with obstructed. Discussion doesn't mind with any of them, neither does death done. Although you've got three, the begin and three, the final words of the line all begin with the same letter. You couldn't claim that as a alliterative because of all the words that are in between them. They don't rhyme either. It was put down as there's nothing that could be done. So again, if I was to say that the discussion, the cause of death, the discussion there, cause of death, there's nothing that could be done. If I was to say that's a deliberate attempt to end each line with a D word, then why does this new line not begin there? That last, that last is stanza, if it's a stanza, I call it the last paragraph I'm going to go with. It's, it's awkward, but that doesn't make it verse. It just makes it bad prose. Again, if this was like a first draft, a student brought this to me as a first draft, then I would make some of the suggestions to like the show show your poetics, show your understanding before you play with the conventions. You have to kind of establish you know what they are. I don't think that this poet has done that, if they're a poet at all, because I, I, they're a writer. This is prose, it's not verse. Yeah, so I'm afraid to say that, again, I would be struggling to find a way of passing that as a poem in a GCSE class, which isn't a fair reflection of poetry out in the world. I, I accept that because um, poetry out in the world, like I say, people play with conventions, they understand them, they do different things. They don't have a remit, something that they must do. Like if, if you're set poems in school and they say you must include a metaphor and you don't, then you fail. But nobody said to these people, you must include meter, you must include a rhyming scheme, you must include... So they haven't had to do that. So it's not fair to say, oh, um, this is an outright failure. But for me, in a GCSE class, I would be like, I'm, I'm, I'm failing to see, I'm struggling to see where I pass this. What does it do that is poetic? Which is why when you're setting a class a task, you don't say, write me a poem. You know, you say write me a poem that shows your understanding of this that shows your understanding of that so in that regard I'm, I'm being a little harsh on these I think but I'm struggling to see the poetry and if I'm struggling to see the poetry then I'm kind of feeling like if this is bringing poetry to the masses revolution and revolutionizing the genre then I don't see that as a good thing because I at least two of the five I would say are not even poems they're they're just 
perhaps even I might even go as far as to say three one w was more a proverb than a poem and the other two I think are just badly written or uh, prose that's been restructured in a way to try and make it look like a poem when in fact it isn't actually a poem to actually qualify as a poem you have to use either a poetic convention or to change the way the words are used to make it art rather than just um, like a reading or where, where's the artistry in this two-tone whale where's the use of a language for something other than just its literal meaning you go back to the the, the our backs carry stories that books don't have the spine for you've got a metaphor you've got a deliberate attempt to use words for more than a single meaning you caught the last bus home using those words then subverting what you expect them to mean it's clever it's using words for just something beyond what they literally mean and if you don't do that and you don't play with any of the other poetic conventions then you don't have a poem you have verse sorry you have prose and that's what this last one is that's what the one before was the the, the our backs one I, I would accept that as poem because there's no rules that say poem has to have a sta three stanzas or anything like that, you know, unless it's a specific type of poem like a sonnet. Um, this one, that one, but I, that one felt, felt more like a proverb to me than a poem. So out, out of the five, I would say you've got two, maybe three that are a passing grade and the other three need a, a serious like a lesson recap you know if I had 30 students and I had 20 of them two-thirds like we've had um, well three-fifths on this um, that that level of percentage of people not quite getting what is required of them in poetry then I would obviously have to introduce a, a recap of bringing another lesson or two in to try to um, introduce in their minds actually this is what you need to do to kind of qualify as a poem you must do something more than just write your thoughts down on a page there's nothing wrong with doing that but if you hashtag poem or hashtag poetry then you're using the wrong hashtag you should be using hashtag thought for the day or shower thoughts or, or proverbs or something along those lines rather than a poem because you haven't written one so I'm going to leave the video there um, perhaps it was useful to some Perhaps you disagree with me. Perhaps you think that the the poems are better than I did and I was being a little bit harsh. Fine. Um, perhaps you've got an uh, Instagram poet who just does a better job than these guys that you think that I should have a look at because, like I said, these were picked from articles rather than from Instagram itself. Perhaps they're not a fair reflection of what actually happens in terms of poetry on Instagram. Like and subscribe. That's the way to get more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one if you do. Bye.